call here. Oh. All right, all right. So it sounds like Patricia, you have a uh, an awards program to attend. <laughs> That's the first time I heard and of it. Too. And passed it too. The first time I heard of it. It's the first time I heard of it. <laughs> Man, I, yeah, I didn't know anything about it. Um, I text Janet and asked her, uh, or, or let her know that you know we we have no clue. <laughs> yeah, Janet is getting ready to go out of town tomorrow. She's going on a cruise. Okay. Wow. Now, who is this, Patricia? Janet. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's all right. Okay. Awesome. So, our lesson today, uh, we're continuing uh, in the book of Revelation. We are in mm -hmm. chapter uh, uh, 14 mm -hmm. of Revelation. So, I'm going to uh, open up with a word of prayer. Uh, first, how's everybody doing? Let me let me not speed past. I see a, a lot of uh, a lot of people online with us. How's everyone doing? Great. Good. Yeah, everybody's good. good. Wonderful. Awesome. 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 All right, uh, Janet. No, oh, Janet just logged in. So, Janet, you you can explain yourself. Folks are getting more and more. Don't be talking about me. What? <laughs> Uh, uh, Sister Brown spilling the beans, saying uh, a bunch of people are getting awarded, and we we have no clue what she's talking about. Awarded with what? <laughs> Mass media's luncheon. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you supposed to be you supposed to be introducing um uh well I see the meeting they haven't really had the meeting yet. You I talking about I, the MPBC? Yes, yes. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. And you know, that just might be true because I, I just have, I have not been uh, a good steward of the MPBC. I'm sorry. Yeah, you were, not, you were not at the meeting. And so now what? What I'm supposed to be doing? Just tell me. <laughs> you might have to do it. Trisha you might have to do it from your cruise. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to be gone till May the 3rd, 2nd or 3rd. Oh, when really? is it? Yeah, when it's, is it? It's usually, I think it's the second Saturday. I was trying to pull it up while Pastor was talking. But it's it's it's, it's, it's usually uh, uh, the second Saturday, I believe, in May. Um uh -huh. Yeah. And so it's Patricia, be at getting, Patricia getting an award? <laughs> mm, yeah, she'll get an award, yeah, but she got to sell tickets too. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Patricia, you on the phone? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Why you ain't tell me that? I just, just found out. <laughs> <laughs> you remember I sent you something that said that uh that that you were nominated or I was nominated and you said you didn't know nothing about it but you were supposed to be at Hartford your yeah it was a minute ago yeah. I remember I thought you said you were nominated I didn't I didn't hear you say I was nominated I probably did mm -hmm. I'm always confused when it comes to MPBC I get it together yeah. That's hard to believe because MPBC the date is, so, is I just, so the date is Saturday, June first, uh, twelve noon, Hartford Avenue Memorial Baptist Church, and uh, what the, else we doing uh, for? We're supposed to be having. We haven't had a meeting yet. This is just information that I got, but that's the date that the launching is supposed to be held. June well, 6th. I will put that on my calendar. And it says, uh, and 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 I'm and I'm not supposed to be doing this tribute to honorees will be Mrs. Ms. and she got you down as Mrs. Janet. Uh -oh. <laughs> Presenter, she's going to present Deacon Patricia Owens of New Calvary. Okay. So now, see, that's the information I got to have Pam to change. Cause so is it it's, June fourth? June fourth? June first? June first? I think that's week. what. She got date Saturday. Well, then she got that wrong then, I guess. June 1st, 12 noon. Yeah, June 1st is a Wednesday. Well, she made a mistake, yeah. I have to tell her. See, it's good I brought it back up. 
Yeah. Um, let Pam know she, uh, in her meeting, she had to correct that. Oh, well. Thank you. Oh, well. Right. Well, that, Thank I, you, I'm Pastor. just so, uh, I'm okay. honored, I'm honored to honor my, my, uh, <laughs> friend Patricia. Your sister. My Sarah. My there Sarah. <laughs> All right, so back to the regular schedule program. Um, chapter 14 of the book of Revelation. I'm going to open up with a word of prayer, then I'll read it nice and loud, and then we will um, continue uh, our conversation. All right, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for another opportunity uh, that uh, you've granted us to learn more about our responsibilities to you, to ourselves, and to the world. Uh, Lord, we pray that uh, this uh, journey uh, through this text uh, open our eyes and ears. Uh, thank you, Lord, for those who are connected with us, uh, as well as those who may listen to this at a later time. Thank you, God, for just being our God and head of our lives. Touch uh, in a mighty way. In Christ's name, we ask it all. Let everyone say amen. Amen. That's good. All right. So I'm going to open up with uh, the reading of the uh, 14th chapter of the book of Revelation from the New International Version. It reads, then I looked and there before me was the lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. Verse three, and they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves with women where they kept themselves pure. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. They were purchased from among men and offered as first fruits to God and the lamb. No lie was found in their mouths. They, were, they are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying in midair and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Verse eight of chapter 14, a second angel followed and said, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great which made all the nations drink the matting wine of her adulteries. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on the forehead or on the hand, he too will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. He will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the lamb. And the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and his image or for anyone who receives the mark of his name. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. Then I saw, uh, then I heard a voice from heaven say, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. Verse 14 of chapter 14. I looked. And there before me was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man with, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple 
and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, take your sickle and reap because the time to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Verse 16, so he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel who had charge of the fire came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle. Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grape grapes from the earth's wine, vine, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes, and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city, and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horse's bridles for a distance of 1,600 stadia. The word of God for the people of God to the glory of God. What imagery, uh, what metaphors, uh, what, what a vision uh, that has been cast in this 14th chapter. All right, the floor is open. Uh, what are some uh, impacts uh, that you had by the reading and the studying of this text? What are some things you wrestled with? What are some things you saw in your head that painted a picture uh, for you, Patricia. Well, one thing that I wrestled with was the 144,000 mm -hmm. men. And the reason why I say that they were men, because it said these were virgins and had not been uh, had not been vowed by women. So does it only does it mean that only men are going to be in that 144,000? OK, hmm. so one. I, I am glad, I'm ecstatic uh, that that passage troubled you because it troubled me. It troubled me to the point where I said, wow. So, so if you, if you, the, the wording it said, um, so, so if you interact with women, you are defiled. <laughs> uh, I, I was, I was taken aback by that. And to your point, I was also taken aback by the fact that there is a gender specific mention in this tax. Pastor, excuse me. When we talked about 144,000, did we not talk about the 12 tribes of Israel and 1,000 being in each of those tribes? Yeah, we, we, we kind so, of surmised that. Yeah, we, so would that would that not be uh, also the men and the women in those? It would not just be the men in the tribes of Israel, but it would not also be the men and the women in each of those 12 tribes? I. Now, Go ahead. Yeah, yes, yet to Patricia's point, th then why not say that in the text? But but maybe, Pastor, because we're talking about a patriarchal society exactly. that speaks particularly to the male. Exactly. Exactly. Sandy, your hands up. Um, I was going to say, I, I agree with Deacon Owens that I believe that is men. It does not say women. It, um, I mean, it does say that they did not defile themselves with women. So I think that it's only men. And then the other thing we have to look at is that this has not taken place yet. So this is a vision of something to happen, you know, in, in the future. So is it, you know, current today is not, well, yeah, men do still think they rule the world, but you know, <laughs> I don't think, you know, I, I think it's a future event. So I can, I, I see it as being um, the men and it's, it breaks it down and it says it's 12,000 from each tribe that totals 144,000. Okay. Now, now, so, so uh, I'm sorry, so Cassandra, you're saying that this is twelve thousand men without without. So in, in other words, you're saying that it is twelve thousand men, uh, and the women. I'm sorry, and and this is not even include including the women. Is that what we're saying? That's what I believe. I, that's what I believe. Faster. I, I I you know we so I I I. I 
I, I like what both of you are doing. One, uh, uh, Deacon Deacon Phoenix is interpreting this passage in light of previous passages, and yet Sandy is taking a literal contextual approach to the text. So how do we reconcile the two? Deacon R Archie Williams, your hand is up. Well, I'm looking at verse uh, three, okay. where it says, no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Now I'm thinking you might have to kind of stretch your mind a little bit and ask yourself, who is the redeemer? Mm. Pastor, uh, 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 verse four says, these are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. These were the redeemed from among men being first fruit to God and to the lamb. So it seemed like to me, it's saying these are men who had not been a woman, uh, he had not touched a woman. Right, because... Because if, if you, okay, so if you take a literal approach to this text, then you have to be cautious because if you say women, to Sandy's point, if you say women and men are a part of this particular number, then how do you reconcile, as Sister Brown is saying, how do you reconcile verse four? Because verse um, four says those who did not defile themselves with women no I, I don't think that women are included that was deacon phoenix that was asking the question oh, i know i know i know, that, okay. I, I, I know. and i'm I, i'm okay. i'm here what you're saying i I'm, I'm just posing the question De, you know deacon phoenix how do you reconcile that with verse four yeah, and verse four says what again now verse that four says these are, these are men who did not defile themselves with women with women okay so it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to generalize the the gender specifics of the 144,000 with that verse. It's a tough one. It's it's a tough one. I okay. think we have to surmise contextually that these 144 are men. So, so what are the what are the problematic implications? Well, then Patricia's question is on the table. What what about the women? Can women be a part of of this conglomerate? Where are they in this number? Why is it that this text always denotes the defilement as being gender specific? in this text it's it, it, it's it's you know yes sandy um just a thought too i think and i'm i may be getting ahead but i thought that i read that this hundred and forty four thousand follow christ everywhere and they also followed him when he went to battle well we do know there's no women in 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 battle you know what I'm saying they 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 would not be there so that's another thing that makes me believe as well that it would have to be just men and no women included. So how do we, how do we answer Patricia? How do we how do we resolve Patricia's concerns about this gender specific? Uh, do women remain virgins, which is the reason the men were not defiled? How do we read? Uh, Pastor, do we look at, again, going back to being a patriarchal society, do we go back to looking at the males being the focus of what we're talking about? And so, you know, when we talk about, uh, you know, not being defiled and what have you, you know, they are the head of the household. They are the head of the tribes. And so, again, are we, you know, focusing in only on them when we talk about these things and not including, even though uh, the women, and I'm, I'm saying maybe the women are included in 144,000, and not including them because, again, we're focusing on the patriarchal again and the men 
being the, the, the major focus. I, 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 I got to agree with you. I, I, can't, I, I do not have tension with what you're saying. I, and, and the issue is, so when, so, so, so if, 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 if the writer is coming from a patriarchal perspective, how do we keep the balance of credence to the text or any text? or any passage of scripture? Or do we only say, well, the only the only passage of scripture that, that do not come from a patriarchal perspective is Ruth and Esther? I, I, I think, I think culture, culture and times are not locked in based upon the gender of the writer. Because I think even women can describe the problematic nature of one's culture and give a perspective of patriarchy from a woman's perspective. Am I making sense? You're making sense, exactly. But only doing very minimal times is that happening in scripture? Right. Like right. doing Ruth and doing exactly. Esther. Exactly. Exactly. So I don't know how to answer Patricia's question. It is a problem. I, it, it, it is a concern. Yet this is a vision it is not yet, ha it's happening in the future. It's, it's like I'm describing a future event through the lens of a historical context. So is that same description going to be locked into the future? If, if the future is not patriarchal deacon rt williams uh i'm gonna just throw this out there <laughs> uh, <laughs> since, since, we, since we're talking about the men's and the women's the women wasn't there maybe maybe something was put in these men's water and uh you know and uh made a difference <laughs> Oh, you got to give me more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia, what are your thoughts? What What are you wrestling with? It just seemed like the women are left out. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're left out, how problematic does that become? Amen. No women. That's all I think. Well, it becomes problematic because then it says, well, as a woman, why should I why should I worry about being right or doing right? Because yeah, yeah. I can't get there anyway. Wow. Mm -hmm. mm. Sandy. Well, I got a little tension with that. So I don't see it as I see these as roles. And so in this particular role, I just see, like I said, I, I thought I read it somewhere that they, you know, they follow him and that they are also in battle with him. And I just don't see the women in the war with him. So it would not be the place for the woman to be there. It doesn't mean that they're not righteous or that they're not right or that they're not in heaven. It's just that these 144,000 were selected for a particular role. And when we read further, it does say that they have a particular role. They also do another function at the throne of God. So I just see this as being just a role that they have specifically. I don't think that women are just excluded from anything else. It's just one of those things, again, where they may not be mentioned because at this point in time, it's not important for them to be mentioned because they're trying to get out the, the you know, 
the importance of this particular role. This is like the beginning of Jesus coming back to start his, you know. Um, and Sandy, I, I hear what you're saying and I understand what you're saying. The problem with what you're saying is you are affirming patriarchy by introducing roles. That is a that is a definition of patriarchy. When you zero in based upon gender roles, <laughs> that's what patriarchy is. But but is that not but is it not common and is it not true though? <laughs> but that okay. okay. <laughs> I, I mean, Reverend Moore, talk to me. She Reverend Moore said, "Hey man, yes." She I mean that, that's what patriarchy is. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Sunday, I mean, <laughs> Sunday, remember you all in Sunday school, I kind of kind of mentioned this when we talk about the historical uh roles that women have had in the church. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's and I understand what's where Sandy's coming from. I really oh, yeah. do. I, but, I totally yeah. yeah, but what happens is people will take that and run with it. I mean, just really, and women will be, and I, I'm sorry I have to say this like this, but women will be, will be pushed to the peripheral, just like Patricia is, um, is um, I shouldn't say struggling, but has tension with, with where it says that, uh, you know, it seems like that women are being left out. And that's what happens. Yeah. It happens. It happens in the civil rights movement. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, we got our rights except women. I mean, you know, it it just I have tension with that. But my 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 concern too about this is are we are we talking about I know we're looking at it literally, and I have to be frank with you all. I read it through, but I didn't just sit down and just really, really study this chapter. So I'm just kind of off the top of my head. But are we are we looking at this literally? I mean, it's like um, right here. And I wrote in, in, I wrote in the comments, and I know it, it sounds crazy, Pastor. I know I saw you read it, and I know it sounds crazy, but <laughs> what I wrote. But it's, it's kind of how we read, because I'm reading like, well, there were women there too, but the women were not defiling themselves either. So... I mean, the men couldn't defile themselves if the women didn't defile themselves. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just, I, but I have a tendency to, to do that. I just really go way out there when I, you know. So, yeah, that's all I had to say. <laughs> I, I, yes, I mean, yeah. I, 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 I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I understand what you all are saying. And I think we reconciled this, and I, I said this previously, the writer is writing from a historical, cultural perspective about a future event that will happen that's not locked into a historicity of culture. I'm, I'm going to take that approach. Now, the straw man of that statement in that position is the fact that patriarchy is is still is still present even today. <laughs> I mean, so you know, we we can have a conversation about how cold hist historical culture. The, the needle moves over time. Yes, it gets better, but there's never, there's rarely a point of equality. Because what Patricia is asking is, well, if they're, if, if, if women are really there, then why don't you mention it? If women are really there, then why are you only saying men? The, the, you know, I, I get that. Th that's why you're asking that question. So I could make the assumption that the needle of patriarchy lessens over time, mm -hmm. but that that's not something I could I could I could push to the to the center of the table. 
and bet all my money on. I, I just can't. I mean, and, and we can introduce, you know, scriptures, you know, if any one be in Christ, he is a new creature. We could talk about there's neither male nor female. We could have all of these, these esoteric conversations, but that does not resolve or remedy the, the writer utilizing historical culture to make a point. And we, as a 21st century church, have 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 uh, 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 solidified the word of God as being God breathed. It, it's 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 a it's a tough one. <laughs> I didn't expect the quietness, but there it is, <laughs> Reverend Moore. <laughs> Pastor, are there some, I think there's some translations that don't mention men for the fourth verse. There's some translations. So um yeah. would that would that also help? Because I'm I'm reading the, I'm trying to see, I'm reading the new living translation, the fourth verse says they have kept themselves as pure as virgins, mm -hmm. following mm -hmm. the lamb wherever he goes. They have been purchased from among the people on the earth. You know, right. it does. It doesn't mention men. However, the Greek might. I don't know. Right. The, the, right. The Greek. You know, the original Greek. You know, has masculinity bled throughout it. So that that's a non-negotiable. You're, you're. But you're right. Translations okay. over time acquiesces to the problematic nature of the text. <laughs> so do we how, you know can, can we continue or mm -hmm. <laughs> verse six i you know I, I i i feel you 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 all know where my heart is on this mm -hmm. I, I, and, and 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 that's why we 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 have these conversations that's why we lift up these passages of scripture that's why I ask, do you have tension with the text? Because I want you to be honest. I want you to be transparent. But Rev, reading from the King James, it, it reads a little different than you know our regular new, uh, uh, you know, uh, transcript. It, it says, "These are they which were not defiled with women, or they are virgins. These are they." which follow the lamb wherever he goes. Mm -hmm. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruit unto God and to the lamb. So to, it seems, you know, to me that there, there could be, there well could be some, like, you know, Catholic, you know, you know, people who, they 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 don't mingle with the women, so it, it's possible. And the pastor, yes, when they talk about the first fruits, they're talking about the hundred forty four thousand. God yes. God says these are the first are the and and I'm sure when he says these are the first his his first fruits, right. he's not just talking about the men. Right. I, I'm I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the twelve tribes, and I'm, I'm thinking about it's not just the men in the first tribes. When he said these are my first fruits, he's talking about all of the first tribes, which includes, in my estimation, the men, the women, the children, and all of them that make up the uh, the hundred forty four thousand. Cassandra. Okay, so I'm gonna just get this out. <laughs> <laughs> get it out, Sandy. <laughs> so. I like what Dora Brown said when she mentioned about uh, the Catholics. It kind of reminds me of priests. You know, they take a vow to remain, you know, celibate. They don't marry, or they say they marry the church. And it kind of just puts me in the mind of that. And I think about these were these were men who probably lived through that type of, you know, code or whatever. They, 
right. they vowed a solemn to the church or something of that nature. I don't know, but I I, so I think they men. I'm sorry, y'all. Love you, but I think they men. And we'll we'll find out when that day comes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We'll understand it better by and by. Amen. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, great, great, great observations. But you know, yeah. Verse six. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, he indication that I can imagine. Many of you said, well, are there no female angels? He said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Sandy. Okay, I'm glad you said that because I remember reading somewhere where um, the question was posed to Jesus about marriage. Well, who will you be married to in heaven? Will you still be married or whatever? And the answer was, you are not married to that particular individual. You would be angels. Well, angels don't have a sex. They're, they're neither male or female. So I would only assume that we would be like that. And that could be where, if y'all want, y'all insist that women included in that number, that could be where the, <laughs> where the women are, because maybe there is no gender once, you know, we go over. I don't know. What do you think? Am I too far off? No, I mean, I, 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 could, I could hear, I could hear that. I've heard that conversation. I wrestle with the parable that Jesus gave about the rich man and Lazarus. And, 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 and parables are what? Parables are uh, what? Heavily meaning with earthly stories or, or vice versa or something like that. Where he says, he says, you know what? I'm sure. The rich man said, I'm sure if you send someone mm -hmm. to my brothers, surely they would uh, repent of their sins on earth. Yeah, but they, they were still living. Okay. So they still had a gender. <laughs> but but I, I think the, 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 the point of that parable was that if they did not listen to the prophets, why should they then listen to the, the person who it was being sent to? I think that was the point of the of, of the parable, was it not? Right. It, right. it, it was. It was. Because I, 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 I'm trying to make sure that there are no that there are no back doors to Sandy's valid point. Pa so, so Sandy's I'm sorry. Point go ahead. Is, Sandy's point is. Well, Pastor, the, you know there there are no there is no gender when it comes to mm -hmm. to angels. Well, okay, so if that's the case, then why is Michael denoted to be male? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, just, I, I, I'm asking as one who would who would push back on that statement. Mm -hmm. and, and then and then if and then if you're going to use the if you're going to use the point, Sandy, that 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 gender specifics are tethered to roles, then, you know, in a war. You know, so. I, it's a toughie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a tough one, but it's an interesting point. P Pastor, that passage you just read, mm -hmm. that passage is saying, I believe, that until G uh, every person on on the planet will have an opportunity to listen to the gospel, to hear the gospel, and to have an opportunity to accept the gospel before Jesus returns, right. because they will not have an excuse right. when he returns and judges. You know, they can't say, "Well, you know, Jesus, I, I, I didn't hear the." Yes, you did. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I live in this little village, yes, but, but the gospel was, 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 was uh, given to you by a missionary. Mm-hmm. So I think when, uh, at least if it didn't say that, what I got from reading 14 somehow is that everybody will hear the gospel before Jesus returns so that no one has an excuse. It's like that thing that says, ignorance of the law is no excuse. There it is. And so they will not have an excuse when, they, when Jesus returns of not at least being conf- not confronted, but at least being given a chance to accept the gospel. Verse eight, a second angel followed and said, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the madding wine of her adulteries. Now, who is fallen? Who is Babylon the great? Well, I don't want to speed past that and make the assumption that, that we know who that is. Who is Babylon the great? Anyone. Is it the devil? Okay, okay. <laughs> Everyone co-signing with that? Everybody co-signing with that? Yes, yeah, no, maybe. I, I, I agree. I, I think that I've read that they describe Babylon um, as an evil for, city. for its uh, destruction or for its, you know, uh, idolatry. So I, yep. I think that would be Satan, in yep. reference to Satan. Verse 9, the third angel followed them and said, Anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on the forehead or on the hand. He, too, will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. What what imagery, as as we zoom out of uh, the Resurrection Sunday, and Good Friday and Palm Sunday. What imagery did you visualize when you read the description of the cup of God's fury? We're interpreting scripture in light of scripture. So what image did you see as we exit out of this uh, Resurrection Sunday. What what did you what what came to your remembrance, Pastor? Could you ask that question again, please? Sure. What 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 image came to mind as you heard and or read this text from verse ten, where it says, "He too will drink the wine of God's fury, which had been poured full strength into the cup of His wrath." He will be tormented with the burning sulfur in the presence. That is describing the, the utter strength of God's fury. But the writer utilizes a cup. Didn't Jesus have a conversation with his father about a cup? Yes. What was that conversation about? And then he asked, had a conversation with with a disciple. He, he, said, he so, says, if, if I, you know, uh, if it be, let's see, now, how, how's it go? It was uh, some kind of a yeah. yeah, but no, he says, if if I can, if this cup, I can't, I can't, I can't, I, can, I know what I'm there. trying to say, but it isn't, it's not coming out right, though. So. Yeah, you, you're, you're, you're in the vicinity. Anyone yeah. want to help him out? Deacon, Deacon R.T. or anyone? <laughs> Yeah, he it said if this cup can be taken from me. Yeah, that's, that, that's yeah. What, what he was um, asking. If it be your will, yeah. you know, if possible, this cup can be taken from me, or some translation may say, pass from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that that cup was filled. That that the, the 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 metaphorical description of the cup was filled with what? Uh. Was they said gobble. I don't know what go- what is gobble. R- 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 T. Mm-hmm. <laughs> would it be the sin? Would it be the sins of the world, Pastor? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Along okay. with the fury of God's wrath, Jesus was the atonement. He was the propitiation. He was to take on the wrath of God as satisfactory payment for this. 
Matthew, thank you. Matthew 26, verse 39. Great. Yep. I think a lot of I think if we if we did just a a, a word study on that cup, you would be amazed. Hmm. On the strength of that. All that Jesus had to take on on a hill called Calvary. He recognized the strength of it and and said, wow, if it would just pass. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, because his will. You know, even even though he wanted to let it pass, he knew his assignment. And he took it on. Yes, Deacon R.T. Yes, I said, like to take a look at uh, John, the first chapter, verse 47, and, and uh, see, see what, okay. what that means. I'm going to read it out loud. You said first John or the gospel of John? First uh, John, first chapter, verse 47. The gospel of John, chapter yes. uh, 1, verse 47. Yes. It says, when Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, am I right? Yes. Okay. He said to him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me, Nathaniel asked? Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Okay. And, and your question, your, your, your uh, connection and your question is? But the, uh, he is saying that he's, in my opinion, he's, he's kind of uh, pure in, in, in his way of living here. He, he's uh, found no fault, uh, in my opinion, here. Okay. And, oh, so, so, so you, you're making that connection to the imagery that's uh, portrayed um, in verse 4 of, of chapter 14. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, uh, so, uh, well, okay. So, so, so I, I, we got to be kind of careful with that because, you know, this vision is talking about a future event that has yet to occur. And these that are part of the 144, um, it says, I looked in there, verse 1, before me was the lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name on, and his father's name written on the forehead. As I heard the sound from heaven, like the rushing waters, uh, no, I'm sorry, the latter part of verse 3. No one could learn the song except 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. That, that kind of draws the line of demarcation between the level of purity between these 144,000 and Nathaniel. I, yeah, I, I could see how you could you could make the connection, but you got to be careful because you know Nathaniel is in, in the context of this scripture is still navigating in a space of defilement, whereas these hundred forty four thousand were redeemed from the earth. So, I, so I mean, you know, I, I, I certainly I certainly get the point you're you're making, but. Uh, and, and does anyone else under does anyone else have have you know a question about that? Okay, uh, Pastor, about this song uh, that we're talking about. Uh, this this is a song that was uh, it was in uh, let's see what 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 verse I thought I wrote the verse down, but it's the song of I'm sorry it's the song of Jesus and his. Uh, redemption and victory and redemption uh through him yeah and this is what this song is about that they're talking about this new song once he unravels the seventh seal wow uh this is a song that uh, that verse is talking about his victory and redemption mm -hmm. that uh we can get through him there it is yeah. 
All right. Uh, unfortunately, we, we are running out of time, so we're going to have to do two things. One, we're going to have to reread Chapter 14. That'll work. And then we're going to have to pick up Chapter 15. Okay. This is, this is a very... A, a very interesting uh, lesson, which I was not surprised. I knew this was going to come up. I, I knew there was going to be tension with uh, this text, but I'm glad that we can at least uh, have conversation without dividing. Okay? Everybody all right? Everybody in the neutral corners? Yeah. <laughs> <Sandy Gore. laughs> <laughs> yes, <I'm good>. <laughs> <laughs> all right so next next week we're going to wrestle with uh, uh youtube revermore uh next week we're going to wrestle with uh, uh the latter part of chapter 14 and chapter 15. uh was that elaine wallace that was on on there as well so good to hear your voice elaine i think that was elaine wallace yeah, that yeah was it. it was elaine but she's oh. muted okay okay all right so if there's nothing else, let us close out uh, to be dismissed. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Uh, we love you. We appreciate you. We're so uh, uh, glad that we were able to um, wrestle with this text, um, to talk about our concerns. Uh, Lord, we are grateful that your Holy Spirit rained down upon us, um, even in, co in conversation and dialogue and in personal as well as corporate reflection. Bless each person that uh, is connected with us on today, as well as those that may listen to this at a later time. We thank you, God, for just being God and head of our lives. Lord, we are appreciative of the fact uh, that you do not have a lens of patriarchy or a lens of misogyny mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to reaching uh, the hearts and minds of men and women uh, about the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, the promises of your word. In Christ's name, we ask it all. Uh, let everyone say amen.